The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today, including, for the first time ever, live in the flesh, it's Professor Jeff Boats. Oh, wow. Uh, what an honor to uh, be among you finally and not some ghostly uh, uh, voice calling from beyond. That's right. You're I've been in the flesh. <laughs> You're in been... Plato's heaven, Jeff. Come on. <laughs> right. You're hanging out with forms. That's what mathematicians do. Oh, no, you're cool. actually in the cave. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. I'm in Plato's heaven and I'll rush him. Here he is. Good. <laughs> Jeff, I've been telling your um, calculus story from March 12, 2020, pretty much all day. I appreciated reading that when I got up this morning. Because, of course, my story is that I had just gotten a new phone and was doing data transfer all evening. And by the time I turned my new phone on at around 10 p.m. Eastern, it was blowing up like you wouldn't believe because oh, everybody yeah. was calling and texting. I walk into the calculus class and, and we're discussing about whether or not we ought to have a class and whether it'll be the last day. And then five minutes in, everybody's phone goes off at the same time. And that's it. <laughs> that was it. That's all it took. A cosmic sign, I suppose. I would say so. Many um, grim milestones coming up in the coming weeks here. Um, someone who doesn't even know the meaning of the term grim milestones, Professor Heather Hill. Oh. <laughs> does that, what, what does that even mean? I was wondering what that was going to mean as an introduction to anybody. Uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> what to say to that but Heather's very positive she doesn't she just you know let's start the second year of the pandemic let's go let's go forward right what? hey I got an appointment for my vaccine on campus hey just got it yeah has, have, has everybody else done that you, you doing that well, yeah. I already got one shot of a two-shot vaccine so I didn't <laughs> sign up for one on campus right right but, so yeah. I would have preferred getting the one-shot deal but whatever you know. yeah. I've gotten both of the Moderna, so I'm now one week away from being fully covered. That's awesome. Although That's I awesome. have heard and read that apparently women are having more of a reaction to the shots than men are. Really? Oh. If anything, my wife had tough reactions after the second shot. Yeah. And That's anyone awesome. who has had the disease is having a much more profound reaction to it. Yep. That makes sense. I got the Moderna, too. I've gotten the first shot of that. Mm-hmm. And it definitely, I felt kind of crappy for a couple of days and my arm ached, but that's not really any different than getting a flu oh. shot. Right. Um, I didn't even notice the first one. The second one, my arm was sore the next morning, but that was about it. Yeah, just more rampant sexism in our society. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's sexist, it's sexist vaccine. All right. Well, I, I do think there, I mean, there are studies that have been done that when it comes to developing vaccines or medicines, they don't, they, they, I mean, you scientists can confirm this or not, but they tend to think about males as the standard. So rather than, yeah. right? That's absolutely yeah. right. Historically, they didn't want to do clinical trials on women of childbearing age, just in case. Since the um, little any... in 61, yeah. Right, so that was primarily historically why that is true. That's so I don't. It took but so we'll long see. to get money for breast cancer research. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Right. So I'm, but I'm pumped. I'm ready. Yep. Let's Let's do this. I rather one point that if they're giving the same dose to to men and women, men being generally weighing more than women, the the dose is actually higher for women. I, I guess they don't Ooh. do an adjustment based on weight. I don't know. That was one explanation. That was it's one explanation. I heard dose. for women being more affected. Yeah with the side effects. There are lots of different reasons that will be explored for many decades to come <laughs> surrounding COVID-19. Um, I just got a text from Sigrid Stripe. She said she got an appointment too. She's very calm. That's great. That's great. Good. I'm a man who's uh, basically almost there. We just heard it's Professor Jim Tubbs is with us today. Hello. Hello. Just a few more days. You could just 
walk around pretending like the world's back to normal, Jim. Well, not well, maybe, me, but well, Jim, normal depends on yes, depends on who I'm, who I'm around too. Right. <laughs> uh, That's exactly right. Dave, kind of pot calling the kettle. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm going to start the rumor that Jim Tubbs bath water is known to cure rickets. So, <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm so thankful That's that we don't have our, uh, <laughs> our immunologist with us today. Aren't wow. you happy you're here, Amanda? <laughs> I have Stephanie uh, going like, what? <laughs> continuing around the horn, uh, Professor Stephen Manning is also here with us today. Good afternoon. Your uh, your new uh, dog is next to you right now, live. No, he snapped at me and went off to growl around his food dish, I guess. Hmm. He's got some, uh, what do they call it, resource guarding issues. Uh -huh. uh, we got him when he, he's about six, and we got him, and the previous owners had done some good things, but they instilled some very bad habits in him, which are very hard to uh, uh, to get out of him in, you know, the two weeks we've had him or something, but we continue sure. to work on it. And by the way, <laughs> what is that? Oh, okay. Just, hey. had the, just had the second one this morning. Hey, it beats the showing the, it beats showing the card. Yeah. I'm still not going to Texas. Uh, Probably no. a good choice. <laughs> Me neither. You know, I checked online, Stephen, actually, and it is the food aggression thing is something that huskies are particularly prone to because they're pack animals. Yes. So there can be competition. For, I mean, the competition for food is signaling who's alpha, right? Is, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. When, I, when, I, when I get down, especially when I get down on all fours and make a, make a rush to his bowl, you know, it gets yeah, the, that, 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 that time. Yeah. 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 If yeah. I've, uh, we, we, we've read things, we've read possible solutions to this, one of which is very oddly, you stay in the room as you pour his food into the dish and you stay in the room with him. You would think hmm. that he would be most threatened by that rather than just putting it in and leaving. But we've tried that with some success. Well, he sees, see. he'll see you as in control of the food, which is what you want. Right. Well, he, he'll see us as not also not a danger to the food. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But we're working on it, no, and I'm going to be the alpha dog in this house. Well, I was going to say for those for those of you who know me, you can understand how it's a little bit difficult for me to play the role of the alpha dog. But you know, I'm trying, especially <laughs> with your haircut, Stephen, which looks good. Thank you. Yeah, but you're less shaggy than the dog now. That's right. That's right. Considerably, um, yes. Uh, coming to us live from uh, Carlsbad, California, it's Professor Mara Livesey. Hello, hello. Hello. And so the weather you have many hundreds of miles away is pretty much the same that we have, just happening a little earlier. That's right. People were talking about having a glass of wine, and I was thinking, well, it's almost one. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it, it's happy hour somewhere. Yeah, five o'clock somewhere. Five o'clock somewhere. That's right. You have to practice really hard, Mara, to get ready for um, a missed St. Patrick's Day last year. So let's just get things started early, you know. That's right. I'm Everyone's Irish. Irish. I'm interested to know what you're doing there. Is anyone going to ask that or are you I, on vacation? I was wondering or? myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, there is a Explain new baby. Yourself. There's a new baby in the family. My That's brother true. and sister-in-law have a child. Okay. So I flew out. I just got my negative COVID test yesterday so we can go join their pod. Awesome. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Mara has carefully planned for this for many months, many, many months. So this is true. Congratulations, Teta. That's what I say. Thank you. Uh, Professor Beth Oljar is here with us today. Hello. What's going on, Beth? Um, not a whole lot. Glad <laughs> I got through midterm grades and I'm still here. So I hear that. I hear that. Midterm grades. Stress for everyone, plus the pandemic, plus coming out of poor winter weather. It's been uh, quite a couple of weeks here, quite a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. With a lot and, of essays I had to read. You know, I figured you were going to say something like that, which was going to be my transition to inter, um, introducing Professor Dave Chow, because, you know, he has all sorts of grading that he has to do these days. No, I don't. <laughs> None. None whatsoever. Actually, I, I take that back. I had to do three workshops at the alma mater this week because it's spring break and for the, their kids spring break they get to take various workshops with sure. working professionals 
Oh, Why they cool. chose me, I have no idea. So <laughs> well, we're happy to have you either way. Pleasure to be here, as always. <laughs> and we are uh, joined today by our guest panelist, Professor Amanda Hyber uh, from the Department of English. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Thank you. Hello. How have things been for you over this wonderful, wonderful, easy, straightforward academic year and past couple of weeks? <laughs> wow. Um, you know, they've been okay. I don't have kids, so that has made the pandemic much easier than yeah. people sure. with kids. But, you know, I'm excited to get back to campus. Of course. Absolutely. Student said something to me today, Amanda, to the effect of, I've heard a rumor, and I'm like, oh, I really hate it when you guys start talking right. that way, that we're going to be in person for fall. I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Have fun with that. That's great. Right. Let's let's push that rumor as far as it'll go. So are we? Are we? I mean, I, I believe that there's a really good chance that that could I happen. I think there's a good chance. Yes. I mean, I just wasn't confident about the ability to get enough people vaccinated by the end of August. But you know, we're certainly going mega gangbusters. Biden's right. speech last night was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like oh, Perfect the government pace. Everyone is Everyone who wants a vaccine should have one by August. Love yeah, it. and uh, the governor announced today that any uh, Michigander 16 or older by 5th of April, and right. that's around the corner. So, yeah. okay. oh, so wow. by my birthday, everybody will be eligible. There you and go. And if not, we start bathing Jim regularly. <laughs> oh, gosh. Why bother? Why bother? <laughs> Jim just exudes vitamin C. That's why he's so sweet. <laughs> I wouldn't mind not having to figure out how to teach symbolic logic online. I don't Yeah, I think that'd be a tough one. <laughs> I'll do Folks, it. Folks, uh, this is a program where you can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you can win a prize that way too. You can send us the questions in a number of ways, emailing us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook or Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. We have a set of questions, professors. Hello, professors. Hello. So we meet again. The sixth part of my great saga set forth by this former Detroit Mercy student. Oh, is everything okay, Michael? I don't think you're muted. <laughs> I feel like we're on a sick Oh, huh? he is now. We'll yeah, fix is. it in post. We'll fix it in post. Uh, by this former UDM student awaits you. As with several sets of questions passed, I put forth the challenge to you to answer uh, 20 questions from various categories, ranging from history and landmarks all the way to pop culture. Since part one, I have raised the bar to 18 or 19 out of 20 that would guarantee a pass for you Good grief. Um, to make it out alive. I know, figuratively speaking. So buckle up, professors, and let the games begin. Best wishes. Of course, this is Natalie Bohe, Detroit ah. Mercy alumna from 2011 from Sterling Heights, Michigan. So let's see what we can do with these questions. This question is about the Coptic Orthodox Church. She actually gave us uh, subcategories for, for each one of these. It's pretty cool. Are you, Jim? Are you? Mm -hmm. That's Egyptian. Orthodox, right? Yes. Coptic. Coptic is Egyptian. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who was the leader of the Coptic Orthodox Church from 1971 until death in 2012? Incredible. Ooh. Probably not Golda Meir. No, probably not. She's not Henny Youngman. Guy. Never mind. Uh, Wrong country. <laughs> oh. I'm going to give partial credit, if you can guess, because it's basically Pope style. So there's a little Roman numeral at the end. You know what I mean? If you can even get the Roman numeral, we're good. Well. IV. <laughs> Metropolitan IV something 26. the fourth. Pontius IV. Pontius Marcus. <laughs> Jeff, sh sh should we go for a prime number or not? Uh, I said you were close, Dave. It's uh, oh. Shenouda the Third, who was the 117th Pope of the Coptic Orthodox Church. Wow! So there you go, Shenouda the Third. I already know what I'm naming my next uh, uh, goldfish at this point. Uh -huh. oh, I, I thought Enzo was going to get another little brother. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I oh, thought please. you were going to say child, but okay. <laughs> How about this uh, question a little more mainstream on the subject of beverages? That wouldn't be hard. Whew. 
What Hawaiian themed juice brand featured three different flavors and was originally um, owned by Ocean Spray? Fruit Punch. Hawaiian Punch. Hawaiian punch. Hawaiian punch. Hawaiian punch. Yeah. See, that was my uh, guess too, but it's not Hawaiian Punch. It's a little bit too straightforward. What is Hawaiian? Um, is some is it some coconut water? Sunny no. delight. No, I'm thinking of another fruit punch. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I know. I'm... It's um, it's actually a classic sort of uh, Hawaiian saying. If you know a little bit of Hawaiian, what, what like fago aloha or something or one one of those? Mahalo. No, uh, no, coconut water. Coconut water. We're not uh, we're not doing very well. Maya? What's a two word Hawaiian saying uh, where the two words start with the letters M and L? Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Yeah. So that's basically what it was. Originally owned by Ocean Spray. So I'm, uh, you know, in very generous midterm grading mood. I'm giving us that one. How about in the subject of uh, animation? Ooh. Some of you know that Walt Disney's first animated feature, and the very first animated feature film in Technicolor, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, uh, debuted in 1937. It was released nationwide early the next year. But when the film was screened at New York City's Radio City Music Hall, something unusual had happened to the film. What was it? Hmm. It, it was suddenly in black and white. Singing whistle while you work? Nope. I think that we may have had a dangling modifier or two. Uh, I apologize. It actually has to do with the place where the film was screened, now that I see the uh, correct response here. So something had changed about Radio City Music Hall. With the Rockettes just suddenly performed in front of it or something like that? I mean, no, no. Is Was it smaller? Did it seat fewer people than? Getting close. I'll tell you what, Beth, it had something to do with the seats. They're too close to the screen. They didn't have enough for everyone who was at the premiere? No, they it didn't have backwards. To... <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a good piece of movie trivia. And oh. it kind of reminds you, we've all seen, um, well, we've heard, I suppose, because there was nobody filming it, that the one of the very first motion pictures that Thomas Edison ever took was of a train coming by and that people screamed and ran away when they saw it for the first time because they thought it was a real train. They had never seen a recorded image before. Um, you're not going to believe this, but um, all the seats had been replaced in their upholstery because the first time the movie had been shown, it was marketed as a children's film, and they were terrified of the witch, and they oh, wet no, themselves. and they wet oh, the seats. Oh, oh, they my, had to change the upholstery. On the seats. Oh, oh my gosh! Isn't that wild? That is. <laughs> yeah. Once we got to the upholstery, you know, I knew what was coming around the corner. Well, well, we go with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> the flying or, monkeys, or, or, <laughs> or the exorcist. The Oh my gosh. I mean, the Wizard of Oz, Jim. Right. I mean, Wizard of Oz, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Did I miss the oh, monkeys? monkeys that were harassing <laughs> yeah, I don't I remember don't. that part. Uh, we knew what you meant, Jim. Frankly, they were the same year, the 1939. That's true. How about, um, how about a little biology, even though we don't have uh, Stephanie here with us today? Uh, this, this small mammal has a force quotient of 164. It can slay prey bigger than its own size. What is this creature? It's Jupiter. a weasel. Oh. It is. It's a, a weasel. Absolutely. It's a weasel. Wow. And Jupiter. Yeah. And Jupiter. <laughs> right. And let me tell you, it is a weasel of a very interesting type. It is known as the least weasel. The least weasel. Mm. Oh. There's confidence building for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. How about some medieval history, Heather? Yeah, I'm scared. Who was the king of Sicily from 1130 to 1154 AD? Same first name as a famous portrayer of James Bond. Sean... Not Roger. Sean. Roger. It's Roger. Oh, okay. Roger the second. Although I got to say that seems a little weird to read. It wasn't going to be Sicily. Pierce, was it? No. Oh. No. <laughs> this was Roger the second of Sicily. Of course. Of course. It doesn't Roger seem like a super Sicilian name. No. <laughs> yeah. mm -mm. 
<laughs> it yeah, really like, doesn't, like, doesn't, doesn't. Like little uh, Rogers pizza doesn't sound like right. Pierre, right. Or, you know, or something so like who's that. Who's your best? Who's the best Bond? Do you think Luigi? John? In your view, John. <laughs> John. It's always I can't get over the fact that we're making fun of Roger's Pizza when a the internet will show us there's probably a thousand Roger's right. Pizza in the yeah. United States, and b anybody who lives close to Royal Oak knows there's a Benito's freaking pizza <laughs> in Royal Oak. Like that there was goes our sponsorship. Oh, caramba. <laughs> How about a little botany? Yeah. The beloved nut, the pecan comes from a tree native to northern Mexico and southern United States near the Mississippi River region. What is the scientific name for that tree? Good grief. Mara, you're close, you're, you're close in California. Go find out. <laughs> yeah, just Holy give me a couple days. Pecan titus tibula. That's all I could do. I, uh, how about I uh, spiff up the question a little bit and say, um, in the, um, I nearly said the medieval name, great. The scientific name for the pecan, um, the name of an American state appears in the name. Arboris Californius. That there, you're, you're so close, uh, you know, Jeff, I, I feel like I have to give it to you, but it's, for whatever reason, Illinoisensis is uh, the name of the pecan. Illinois. Oh, I thought it would be South Carolina. Does it grow yeah. Illinois? Right. Exactly. Does it? I don't think pecans grow in Illinois. <laughs> We knew it wasn't Alaska, so I mean. Yeah, but it's biological taxonomy. It doesn't have to make sense, right? Yeah. So, That's right. It yes, never it did must. to me. It must make sense. There's <laughs> someone. Okay. Hop off is the name of this question. A rabbit named Darius, who lives in the United Kingdom, has been recorded to be the largest rabbit in the world. What kind of breed? is Darius. Siberian husky. <laughs> <laughs> the husky rabbits. Some... Rabbitus giganticus. <laughs> and again, rabbit. I mean, yeah. breed. It's a combination of Jim and, and Beth's statement. It's um, they're called the continental giant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh. I was going to wait for like the Chernobyl bunny or something like that. I how, mean... big, how big are we talking? You know, I, I wish that that was what the question was asking, because that would be interesting, but it's Marty not Weaver here. Marty has bunnies, so I kind of got interested in bunnies after being at his house and holding one of the uh, one of the bunnies. How about a little uh, film again? This film was the only cinematic project for whom Theodore Seuss Geisel did any of the artwork for. Hat in the hat? No. Uh, let's see. Hold on. What did... It's a live action film. Well, like Tom and Jerry, what, dancing with, you know, let's see. Hold on. Was it's a live a action film that debuted in 1953. I'm sort of surprised. This is a good chunk of trivia. I, uh, I thought that you would know this. Well, that was, was before it a the Dr. Grinch. Seuss story. Can we ask that? It is. It it basically was a Dr. Seuss story that was made for the movie. Like if Dr. Seuss was going to make a live action movie in the fifties, this the was going to be it. The Lorax. This is go. Yeah, the Lorax. That's the thing I was trying to think of because I that was remade recently. Yeah, what's the Horton book? Horton. Horton. Horton here's a who. You know, it uh, in the end was not made into a book, Amanda. It was called The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. Um, it's basically a cult film now. It tells the story of a boy named Bart who's made to practice the piano, but when he falls asleep, he dreams he's in a surreal world with his piano teacher as a mad dictator. Hmm. Well, yeah, stuff. a lot of us had that experience. It was called music class. <laughs> or, or dissertation. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, let's go uh, slightly more mainstream than that, although I'm surprised that none of you brought up any of the uh, recent uh, headlines concerning Theodore Seuss Geisel. Oh, please. Um, it was the family that decided yeah, to pull yeah. the books, not the Democrats. Right. <laughs> um, folks, Play-Doh... The play clay, not the philosopher, was originally used or marketed for what purpose? It was a cleaning agent, wasn't it? 
Yeah. Do you know what it was supposed to clean, Dave? It was supposed to like, what was it, dust collection or something like that? That's right. But for a very specific thing that needed dusting at the Cars. time. Car ventilation? No. Chalkboards. Uh, Chalkboards? Chalk S- Siberian Husky fur pickup. <laughs> Possibly. No, you know, it was there to uh, help you clean your wallpaper, which was going to be a big deal at that time, oh. you know? Oh, my who, gosh. Who, who has wallpaper anymore? <laughs> a lot of people. There's a comeback. Oh. There's a wallpaper comeback. Big comeback, yeah. That's right. Yep. Sorry, I belong in a painting household over here, so. so I belong in a painting wallpaper dusting household. was a big concern at that point? That was, yeah. That Don't was you the, dust your walls? Well, <laughs> that was the issue of the era. I suppose the texture of it could make <laughs> right make you need a unique yeah, product, though play-doh would not have been what i would have thought huh see mara we keep the dust on our walls for insulation value <laughs> that's right this is something they could have used siberian husky for for two who were the first african-american female and male to win an academy award Patty McDaniel. Patty McDaniel and Sidney Poitier. You know, it doesn't say Sidney Poitier here. It says for the male that it's James Baskett. Do you remember what film he was in? No. Hold on. Now, that being said, does it have to be an actor? actor or best actor? Or just the... Right, it could be or or just an academy. Yeah. Oh, as a supporting... Maybe it's yeah, Sidney supporting. Poitier was the first best actor, uh, African-American. Or it could even be music score, right? I mean... Yeah, exactly. It could, yeah. Be, it could be anything. And yeah. um, I believe that we are actually talking about an actor who is relegated uh, to su- uh, supporting uh, in terms of the, the win. James Baskett was Uncle Remus in Disney's oh. Song of the South. Oh, uh, which is for the super record, rare to get now. So in any other world of watching that film, I have seen it once a long, long time ago. You would say that guy's the main character uh-huh. but no supporting no. actor you got to be kidding me yeah to brer rabbit really yes yeah exactly all right crazy before colgate put out toothpaste and other products for oral hygiene what products did colgate sell so gym tubs bath water that's right it was oh. soap oh. actually they had a, a weird niche industry <laughs> Using the, um, what am I thinking here? The manufacturing tools they had to make soap and candy. Oh, great. (laughs) Glad they didn't get them mixed up. (laughs) Talk about wash your mouth out. There we go. There we go. I knew it was coming. I've had that done. It is not fun. Hasn't don't, anybody uh, else ever had their mouth washed out with soap? Don't do it by accident. I just I always recall the 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 part in A Christmas Story yeah. where Ralphie is the county having his taste. mouth washed out, talking about the piquant <laughs> <laughs> flavor of Life Boy. And of course, he got he's blind at the end, and he he said, "What happened?" He said, "It was the Life Boy." Yeah, was that so was it. Poisoning. Made him blind. That's how I lost my eyesight. Mm. I, told you, I told you you should have used the palm olive. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like That's so great. That's such oh. a great line. Oh my gosh. Of course, it reminds me of the. Um, I'm starting for whatever reason because the students forced me right. Um, every one of my lectures this semester with a uh, uh, curated off the internet dad joke. And today's dad joke was um, I accidentally sprayed um, deodorant in my mouth this morning. And when I started talking, I had an ax scent. Uh, oh, thank oh you. God. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, our next question is a video daily double. This is pretty interesting. Hmm. Oh. What is this fruit? Durian. Oh, it is. It's a durian. Durian? durian. I've eaten that before. Why would you show that to me? Right. Mara is you know how I feel. scared of durian. <laughs> really? They, tell, tell us about durian, Mara. They have the flavor of rotting carcasses mixed with trash. Yeah. Ooh. That's not tasting. Terrible. Yeah. Blah. I mean, for, okay, my father who dared eat anything and everything, he tried that twice and spat him out twice. Wow. Mm. I mean, and he has the endurance. He tried everything, and that was one thing he would not stomach ever. I feel and when I went to China, to I tried it, and it was tolerable. Tolerable. I didn't say it was great. Tolerable. Oof. I've also He's heard other. I've also heard other god awful descriptors about it too, and. 
I just to look at it, I think, why try it? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's well, I mean, why would it, it looks like that? it doesn't want you to try it? Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, and it's actually banned on a lot of like public transportation, too. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. Gosh, if you accidentally drop that on someone's head, they're gonna, they're gonna be bleeding. It's a medieval weapon. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, professors, one more. Natalie always tortures us with this high-level trivia. This one is doable, doable. In the United Kingdom, you won't be able to go to the grocery store and buy eggplants and zucchini, but you will be able to go to the grocery store and buy... Aubergine. They, aubergine. aubergine. And, aubergine. Uh, and oh, zucchini. Uh, mm. The aubergine I knew... Squash. What's, what's what's another fancy word for zucchini and green or something? I just love the fact that they're both, and this is the only hint I think I can give you, clearly French words. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the United Kingdom. Where? I don't know. What's French? Zucchini. What's French for green, Amanda? Courgette. Courgette. They're courgettes. Yeah, they are courgettes. Nice. Hey, what do you know? Got it. What is that? What is that? And by oh. the way, oh, you oh, used her phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> I cheated. I'm bad. Well, I mentioned also, this. Uh, I mentioned this before. Based on how wonderful, you know, having grown up Italian, continuing to be Italian, <laughs> and um, not having a choice. Cooking is the Italians are not very creative when it comes to their zucchera, their their squash. Everything is zucchini. Everything. They don't have different names. It's like that's the brown one. That's the one that's shaped like this. It's Wait all zucchera. Basically, what, what, you mean like durian in Italian is like zucchera? I mean, what? no, no. Right. durian is not a squash. All right, <laughs> durian is not a squash. You got to get serious. Just slice it thin, fry it up. It's good. Doesn't matter the color. You don't need a few names for this. Zucchini bread, yummy. Exactly, exactly. Holy smokes, we uh, definitely filled more than just one episode here, professors. I'm afraid the time has come for us to say goodbye, Heather. Bye-bye. Jeff. Arrivederci. Jim. Goodbye. Steven. Bye. Mara. Adieu. <laughs> Beth. How fear saying? Dave. See ya. And Amanda. Bye. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. As the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>